making it rain in these YouTube streets with the word of God. Hello and welcome to Religion Link TV. I'm your host, Spirituality, and my spiritual ears say. Hey y'all, welcome to the morning read. Let me make sure this thing is recording. We're going back through the webcam. Old 2008 Vista. Second Chronicles, chapter 21, 22, 23, and 24, about 80-something verses. So, here we are. <laughs> we know some people like to get up and read people for stuff, but we like to get up and read people for life. That's life more abundantly. Why? Because we know Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. If you learn of his ways, you'll walk in his truth, and then you'll begin to live his life. And let the mind be in him, also be in you. Also, we know people cannot physically see, literally read, and are just church hurt and abused by people in church and mad at God. You're watching Religion Link TV. I'm your host, Spirituality, and my spiritual ears say, absolutely so. Basically, we've been reading about the kings and the accounts thereof. We've learned in the book of Chronicles that there's other books, the book of Nathan, the book of Edu. Uh, we learned there's a prophet. What was his name yesterday? Go back into the morning and read um, this March 2nd, and you can find all the answers there, you guys, that we've been discussing and reading since we've been doing this morning read. March 2nd, allowed Deuteronomy chapter 5. But I said, if you guys want to get on one accord and be on one accord with the morning read, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5, read all the way through verse 24 today, 2 Chronicles chapter 24 today, 2 Chronicles, or go to Revelation 12, then Genesis 1 and 1. Um, you'll be on one accord with the Most High God. And we'll all be drinking of the same spirit. So with that being said, you all, oh, that's a mouthful. I'm going to have a teleprompter. I'll be trying to read all this. Nothing is really scripted. I'm led by the Holy Spirit. So if you see me get schizophrenia in the spirit, it's because the Holy Spirit just don't want you in the New Testament. Just don't want you in the Old Testament. You gotta kind of bridge the gap and connect the two in order to understand what God was saying and what man inter interpretation, what man's interpretation of this good word is. <sighs> Damn, that's a mouthful. I do apologize. I have no lashes on. Ah, oh, whatever, guys. It is what it is. Begin to listen to what thus said the Lord. Have you ever seen God what you listen to him, right? You see me, and yet you have a hard time listening to me. That's what faith is. Don't walk by sight, but by what you hear. And all faith is in hearing, 
Because faith comes by hearing the word of God, not the word of the devil, not the word of your husband, not the word of your wife, not the word of your children, but the word of the Most High God, Yahweh. <laughs> I took a little nap earlier. We're leaving 7 o'clock in the morning. It's now about hmm, 12.40 East Coast time, right? Here in uh, New York. Man, oh man. When I say between packing and just anticipation of just sitting around waiting to get your key on Tuesday and get the mood started and I can stay here in the benefits until June 1st, but I want to be out. I want to give you guys so much more exposure to religion and TV, my ideas, my way of life, my beliefs. I've been doing that in all 790-something videos of that. 793 videos. This should make 794. You guys have been amazing to me and allow me to share so much about what I think about religion, Christians, the Romans, black people, the content creators, respectfully. I appreciate that. Now, let's get into the morning read. Guys, it's going to be a slow one, but look, you get to look. Hopefully, this goes up on the premiere. You get the premiere and network with me down below. So, I'll tell you in another video right after this why we're back to webcam and on the old um, laptop. And whatever else okay i'll give you content there but let me just get into this one and read we have four chapters to go guys and as you can see i don't really want to do it <laughs> but i still have gladness of heart and a willing and obedient one to do that said the lord i just choose to do it now because i know when i lay down i'm not going to get up until you know maybe two hours before it's time to go to get myself ready. One second, guys. Perfect. Oh, how long have we been recording? I don't know. It doesn't keep track. But you know what? It is what it is. We're going into chapter 21, second book, the second chronicles, and verse 1. Now, Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead, too. And he had brethren, the sons of Jehoshaphat. I gotta remember you up and not straight ahead. <laughs> Azariah and Jehiel and Zechariah and Azariah and Michael and Shephatiah all these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Alright, so, remember in the book of Kings, we went through all of this, the beginning of Chronicles, first Chronicles, we went through the genealogy of all the kings. Now, we're in the book of Chronicles, and in the book of Kings, it told us, it said, did you not read of this in the book of Chronicles? So now we get to the book of Chronicles and we're barely reading the account of what happened. But what Chronicles, Chronicles is telling us, you all, go to other books like the book of Nathan, the prophet, the book of Ido, I-D, apostrophe D-O. And then yesterday, if I can get back into reading mode. Let's see. I don't want to stay too long, but go back into the morning read yesterday and listen. And there's a prophet, another prophet, Jehu. Jehu. There's a book of Jehu that you can read things about. Now, Go back into the morning read and check all this out, right? So it goes on to say in verse 3, And their fathers gave them great gifts of silver, and of gold, and of precious things. I don't like looking down. I want to be able to look at you guys. 
and the precious things with fenced cities in Judah. But the kingdom gave he to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. For now when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom, Of his father, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with the sword, and divers also with the princes, princes of Israel, excuse me. Then five goes on to say, Jehoram was thirty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. Six. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, like as did the house of Ahab. For he had the daughter of Ahab to wife, and he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. 7. How be it the Lord will not destroy the house of David? Because the covenant that he had made with David, and, and as he promised to give a wife to him, and to his sons forever. 8. And in the days of the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. Now the Edomites used to be down with us because at one point in time was, is allegedly the twin brother of Israel, right? Isaac is his father. Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob will be his, his father. Isaac will be his father. Jacob is twin brother. Why not would he not be Israel? Or not even not even Israelites. Well yeah, they were all Israelites at this time. They're just not the twelve tribes. I had to think about that for a moment. Is question Is the Edomites Israelites? Even though they go by Edomites, all the brothers go by their name, Benjamin, Benjaminite, Reubenite, but they're still Israelites. So would Edom be considered of the Hebrew descent, being the alleged twin brother? And I do say alleged of Israel, Jacob. So let's go on. Verse 8. Now let's finish with 7. How be it the Lord will not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David, and as he promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. 8. In his days of the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. I did read eight guys. Nine. Then Jehoram went forth with his princes and all the Terriots with him. And he rose up by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him in, and the captains of the chariots. Verse 10, and we have to go to verse 20. So the Edomites revolted un from under the hands of Judah unto this day. The same time also did Libna revolted from under his hands, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his father. Now, if you read the book of Jude, in this same set Bible I have, it gives you an account that Judas Maccabeus revolted against the Assyrian army, and that's how the menorah was started, you all, because what? They had a lamp, it was running out of oil, and God allowed it to burn another eight, nine nights to fend off the Assyrian army, the, the Assyrians. So, that's some truth you guys need to study up on. <laughs> Alright, so, going right into verse 11. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah there too to do the same thing. People are still causing you to fornicate on God, putting all these mythologies and different ideologies and ways of worshiping God, which further leads believers like Christians astray 
and, and still being a lot of sheep out here where there's other people waking up to the word of God being woke and, and moving past the oppressor and, 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 and their neck and the yoke and the iron being still on their neck and their head so we still going to go ahead and read here verse 12 and there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet saying now remember Elijah we read about him how he was caught up in the whirlwind he dropped his mantle and it went to Elisha who got a double portion and that's a double portion of the spirit of God coming so 12 and there came unto him a writing from Elijah the prophet saying thus said the Lord God of David thy father because thou hast not walked in the ways of the Jehoshaphat thy father nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah. 13. But has walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and has made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring. And y'all think I be lying when I be sitting here saying you a whoremongering, and you a fornicating and adulterating on the Most High God in Israel and your own people. I've read this Bible, people. I've heard what God said in this word and outside of the word because there was only several books that these people had. And we was reading some of them along the way. They had the Torah. They had the teachings of Moses. They had a book called Jasher they mentioned in here. They mentioned the book of Nathan I never heard of. The book of Jehu. The book of, book of Idol. This shows that the book of Jubilee is mentioned in here. There's so many books mentioned in here that you don't get to hear about in church. Because it's not a book game anymore. It's a numbers game with them. It's a numbers game with them. So now the books don't matter. These don't matter anymore. Mm -mm. But they matter to some people like the Living on TV. I'm your spirituality. My spiritual ears say... Guys, 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 let's get into it. Alright, so it goes on to say 13. What well, has walked in the way of the kings of Israel and has made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab and also has slain the brethren, thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Ahab was married that I know of to Jezebel, and it was a whoremongering, oh, it was some whoremongering ways, okay? And you, and you see the whoremongers on YouTube, they say they're godly, but every Ash Cat, Dollar Sign, uh, PayPal, did I say Ash Cat, Dollar Sign, PayPal? Beefing for dollars. My baby ain't got no 50 cents to go to school to eat lunch with kind of ways. These people making God look bad and steady hormongering at the other gods. Right here, people. So it goes on to say, 14. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people, and thy children, and thy wives, and all thy goods. See, even the children, I used to feel sorry for the children on YouTube, and I still feel sorry for the children of the world. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's keep living. If I said the song right, but you know what I'm talking about. We all are children, and I care about God's people, but God will take the children out. So y'all might be beefing against some of God's people out here and your children is getting caught up in a crossfire. Why? Because God is trying to tell you something through the word and you're not listening. God will let the children get it too. Who say that on YouTube? Even the kids can get it. But I don't condone that. I'm just saying what the word of God says. Me and God have our differences, but if God said the children can get it, then by all means, we are all his children, and we all have gotten it in some kind of way, shape, or form. When are we going to stop allowing it to happen? When you start to be obedient to God, 
This kind of stuff stopped happening, okay? Now, verse 15. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels, until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. Who got sickness with their bowels? You know the colon is part of your bowels. It is your bowels. Your intestines is part of the colon. Colon, large, small, bowels. See, I love God says about the bowels of mercy. But there's some people in their bowels is sick and wonder why they run around here on these YouTube streets trying to make life hard for people and sick in their bowels day to day. Some truth here, people. Now, 16, moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians that were near the Ethiopians, to the Ethiopians, 17, and they came up unto Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house and his sons also and his wives so that they were, so that there was never a son left him save Jehovah Ahaz, the youngest of his sons. Y'all got to give me some props with these names. I've been doing my best. I've been doing my best. Y'all got to give me some props with these names. I have definitely been doing my best. Alright, so now it says, 18, And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. Who do you know in this world that have an incurable disease in their bowels. Speak the word of God and life into them. Because I know a few people on these YouTube streets who have been made mention of allegedly to having some incurable diseases, having afflictions with their bowels, having, you know, sickness and disease that they have to live with the rest of their life. Should not these people be speaking God? Seeking refuge, seeking religion and TV and channels like this to probably learn how to repent and come from amongst the wickedness and the accursed thing that God talks about in this Bible. God said in himself, if you're reading of the same said Bible, then you have some issues to deal with and address, not just with other content creators and people around you, but if you this kind of sick and this kind of oppressed and afflicted, you need to about peace and, and you know, do the military command about peace and, and seek God, look back to the most high God. So it goes on to say, 19, and it came to pass that in the process of time, after the end of the two years, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness, so he died of sore diseases. And his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. They didn't give him the same kind of respect. In the last verse of 20, 30 and 2 years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem 8 years and departed without being desired. I just said that, right? They didn't, they didn't praise and worship him and miss him. They was actually kind of glad he was gone. Howbeit, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchre church of the king. He didn't get that kind of recognition. Alright, so I know it took us a long time to get through verse, the first verse, which was 21 of Second Chronicles, but guess what? You learned a lot in however many minutes we've been going now, right? But at the same time, God is good because I know how to push through. Now, verse 22 only has 12, chap 12 verses, so let's go ahead, do our little intro. You're watching Religion Link TV. I'm your host, Spirituality, and my spiritual ear to what, y'all? It's becoming a household name, right? A household saying. My spiritual ear, stay. 
Share it with your preachers, your teachers, your schools, your work, wherever you go. Share the morning read. Oh, and if I can show you something and tell you something, maybe I'll save it for the next one. No, I have to share it now. I have to promote myself. When you guys Google morning read, right? Google morning read. I don't know what other browser you can go through, but I go to Google, then morning read. I click on image to look for that red cup that says morning read. Well, I was doing that today, right? And I scrolled down, and what came up like four rows maybe down, five rows down? Your girl logo, the morning read, is trending on Google when you search for the images. I'm just so excited, you all. So, the morning read, episode 86, definitely is on the rise. And I was so excited, so I have proof of that and everything. Maybe I'll... Again, if you can see the morning read, I'm hoping you guys can. i trying to... <laughs> Alright, you can see the morning read was put into Google search. You can see right there, I do apologize, the morning read. And then I'm going to exit out so I can come over here to this level. See, see that red cup? There. I was researching that. And lo and behold, what I had got was this right here. That would be my logo. Uh-oh, uh-oh, right there. That would be my logo, you all. <laughs> On the same page. I'm so excited. Thank you. Okay. And if not, you guys can Google it. Search not the morning read. Just put in morning read and scroll down. You'll see my logo there. Thank you. Now. We're going into chapter 22. Let's go ahead because, again, at some point in time, it's going to say, well, you can find this out. Not no longer in the book of Chronicles where the book of Kings let us. See, it's almost like a witch hunt, right? These people want to send us on to find out the truth about God. First, they tell us in this good book, not that God will send us in a confused state. In a confused state. But these people will say, in Kings, you, did you not read it in Chronicles? But we haven't read Chronicles yet. Now we're in Chronicles. Did, can't you find it in the book of Nathan, the book of Idol, the book of Jehu? We didn't even know those books exist. So it's just like one big great witch hunt to find out who this Jesus is. First of all, because there's 18 years of his life missing. But then to find out the real truth. Remember they said this mystery so let's play the game, people, during the morning read and figure out what some of these mysteries are and have a good old time in the Lord. Welcome to the morning read, people. I, I, I'm your host, Spirituality. It's ringing over here like that, people. <laughs> it's ringing over here like that. So let me get a little comfortable here. Yes, I can't cross my legs, but medically speaking, it's not a good thing to do. I'm just trying to prop so my arms don't get tired with this knee. <laughs> Alright, so now, chapter 22, verse 1. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, the young, his youngest son, king, in his stead, in his place. For the band of men that came with uh, the Arabians, to the camp has slain all the elders. So Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. Now, again, I just read something to you in the last chapter about Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia, you hear more about Egypt. Ethiopia has a profound significance to this Bible, according to Psalms 87, if you interpret it that he was born out of there. It, it, it's, it's deep. So, we're going to include Ethiopia into our research and see what we can find out based on this Bible and what comes up besides the Ethiopian, the eunuch, whom Paul, Philip, ran into in the New Testament, got up in a chariot, and they began to read the book of Isaiah together. Remember that? 
So there's accounts of other races besides the Hebrew Israelites ourselves being in here. But they played their role, we played our role, enemy to enemy, friend to friend. There was people mixing and mingling and going with different races at this point in time. So the bloodline was definitely being kind of tweaked and messed with. And people were being friends with Ethiopians and making legions and leagues or, you know, affinities and pacts or whatever. I won't war against you, you won't war against me like our fathers did. X, Y, Z. So, it goes on, verse 2. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned in one year in Jerusalem. Now, again, mostly the American government with their kingship, commander in chief, whatever you want to call it, the government, they're generally 35, 40, they go up to 70. But based off of this Bible, we've seen where one child was, what, 7 years old, 16, 18, reigning as king. So, But the average age is 35, 40 in here as well, you will see. So, um, just giving you Bible information, I, I love to just break down this book because there's a lot of controversy with it. And if you're afraid to look at it as a black woman, understanding it as a child of God and not a black woman reading a Greek Bible serving a white God, but just as a child of the Most High God being a black woman, you get more history out of it than salvation. Now your salvation is with the Lord. <laughs> so I, find, I, I suggest you get yourself in the presence of God to be actually saved working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, even in his presence. Um, again, because we just read, God will take your children and, and, and all your goods if you get on his bad side, if you do evil in his sight, if you fight against him and his children. So I learned not to get on his bad side. I learned to do what's right in the eyes of God. It ain't always right. We and him go head to head all the time. That's my father. We don't always agree on everything. But I will not play the devil's advocate to agree to disagree. Or, no, we don't do that. Yay is your yay, nay is your nay. And then we come back around and there's something for us to agree on. And, and maybe I'll go out, do whatever, cry. He may go cry. You never know what God do when you get in an argument with him. Have you ever gotten in an argument with the Most High God? Have you ever laughed with him, cried with him, joked with him, spoke his word to him, heard from him, felt his presence? I'm serious, people. There's some people in this world that have. Dead serious people. There's people in this world that have. So, verse um, two goes on to say, his mother's name also was Athalia, the daughter of Ami. Now I'm going to go ahead and push through a little bit here. Three, he also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was the counselor to do wickedly. Four, and wherefore, wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord, like the house of Ahab, right? For they were the counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. 5. He walked also after their counsel and went from Jehovah, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Haziel, king of Syria, at Ramoth Gilead, and the Syrians smote Joram. 6. And he returned to be healed in Jezreel because of the wounds which were given at him at Ramah, when he fought with Haziel, king of Syria. So, and, Hazi, and Azariah, the son of jo Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram, the son of Ahab, at Jezreel, because he was sick. People got sick in this word. Everybody that was in the presence of God didn't walk in perfect 
like, let me tell you something, people. God says we are afflicted people. How afflicted do you want to remain, though? Because he also said he shall deliver us from them all. Whatever your afflictions are right now, meditate on Psalms 34, 34 and 19 and begin to allow God to deliver you from those afflictions. All right, so we're going to go ahead and verse 7. And the destruction of Ahaziah, excuse me, is that he was just still sitting there. <laughs> and, okay, seven. At the destruction of Ahaziah was a God, was of God by coming to Joram. For when he was come, he went out with Jeho Jehoram against Jehu, the son of Nimshi whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. Alright, now this is confusing because there's a Jehu who was, uh, had an evil spirit put on him by God, but it says his mother was Je Jezebel and his father was Ah Ahab, but Nimshi could be, because you know sometimes how Nimshi could be Ahab's father and they say, the house of the father would be David to Solomon, to Solomon's son, Roabohem. So instead of saying Roabohem father is David, I mean Solomon, they'll say the son of David, but really it's the son of the son of the son of sometimes. So just be mindful of that. I'm sure... Ahab, the way we read it with Jezebel, go back in the playlist, it's titled Jezebel, um, on it a couple of times when we go back, I can't remember what episode, but go back and check that out, let me know if you believe that, because it, it could be an A, it could be a Jehu from Nimshi, it could be a Jehu from Ahab and Jezebel as well, remember I explained that as well, different people, can folks name people after each other and stuff like that. So, verse 8, And it came to pass that when Jehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab, he found the princes of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah um, that ministered to Ahaziah, he slew them. 9, And he sought Ahaziah, and they caught him, for he was hid in Samaria. And brought him to Jehu. And when they had slain him, they buried him because they said they, He is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no power to keep still the kingdom. Alright, now let's go on to 10. We gotta go to 12. But when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. You remember? We read this, right? And I was like, what seed did she destroy? I remember their teaching now. Go back. Go back. And watch the morning read. We're trending when you search the images for morning read on Google. Our logo, Religion Week TV's logo is there. Yes. So, it goes on to say, verse 11, but Jehoshabeah, the daughter of the king, took Joash, the son of Aziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So Jehoshabeah, so Jehoshabeah, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoadiah, the priest, for she was the sister of Haziah, hid him from Athaliah so that she slew him not. Man, and I guess, you know, the mother wants to slew this poor baby for whatever reason, but the woman had enough sense to take the child and hide it. Sometimes you got to do what Anthony said over there in World Stop. 
Hide your wives, hide your kids. You got to even hide your husbands nowadays. <laughs> so with that being said, you all, be mindful of this stuff right here. Because I'm telling you, people trying to get your kids. Who are your kids? If it ain't God for your disobedience, it's your enemy because you're obeying God. Either way, they're trying to get the babies under. Remember they tried to kill the Hebrew boys under two? Moses likened unto Christ, Christ likened unto Moses. They're still trying to kill it, but the Hebrew baby boys now 40, 50, 16, 18, male and female. They're just trying to kill the, the Hebrew children. <sighs> Verse 12. The last in chapter 22, and it goes like this. And he was with them, hid in the house of God, six years. And Athaliah reigned six years over the land. Athaliah reigned over the land, not six years. He was with the Lord six years. And Athaliah reigned over the land. Over the land. So, there was a woman reigning, hey, religion with TV, reigning in what she do, Tasha K, reigning in what she do, Lovely T, reigning in what she do, there's a lot of people out here reigning in what they do as women, you understand what I'm saying, so with that being said, Wendy Williams held it down all this time, people are reigning at what they do, you just gotta get on the bandwagon, whether you like their lies, my truth, my truth, their lies, people are going to give it to you the way you receive it. Right? And, and that, that's, that's what it is. I refuse to put on the collar and sit up here and, no, simplistic. Re receive it. Sim simply, just simply receive it. Simply receive it. That's going to be a cup. Just simply receive it, okay? Just receive it. But make sure it's of God. It's godly. It's positive. It's not negative. So we're going to move right into chapter 23. Guys, and we have a hefty one to go. We got 21 verses and 23. And then we have 27. So we're doing pretty good. I still get to shout. I don't think it's been quite even an hour yet. And it's been known to go to two hours, you all, so I'm not worried about it. You got somewhere to go? I do. I'm going to New York City, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and possibly the Bronx for Memorial Day. Shout out to everybody for Memorial Day. God bless you. And let's get into this read. Alright, so, verse 23 goes on like this. And in the seventh year... Verse, chapter 23, verse 1, goes like this. It goes really something like this. And in the seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself and took the captains of hundreds. Azariah, the son of Jehovah, and Ishmael, the son of Jehohanan, and Azariah, the son of Obed, <laughs> Now remember, it could be the same Obed that uh, birthed Jesse. Mm, we'll see. The, <laughs> the grandfather of David, great grandfather of Solomon. There is a Obed that's in the lineage of Jesse and David and Solomon and so forth. And then it goes on. And Masiah, the son of Adiah, and Alishaphat, the son of Zachary into covenant with him too and they went about into judah and gathered the levites out of all the cities of judah and the chief of the fathers of israel and they came to jerusalem three and all of the congregation made a covenant with the king in the house of god and he said unto them behold the king's son shall reign as the Lord has said of the sons of David. Something about the sons of David. 
Then it goes on to say, For this is the thing that you shall do, a third part of you entering up on the Sabbath of the priests and of the Levites shall be porters of the door. Five, and a third part of you shall be the king's house, a third part at the gate of the foundation, and all the people shall be in the courts of the house of the Lord. Six, but let none come into the house of the Lord, save the priests, and they that minister of the Levites. They shall go in, for they are holy, but the people shall keep the watch for the Lord. When was the last time you kept the watch for the Lord? I'll tell you a story real quick. In the New Testament, Christ said, wait here, don't sleep, hold it down. They fell asleep, couldn't even watch for an hour. He goes to pray. As he's praying, they come to apprehend him. Have you ever fell asleep and let somebody get captured or seized or apprehended because you fell asleep? You couldn't stay woke. You couldn't pray. You couldn't be steadfast and remain patient and humble and, you know. Have you ever been in that situation? Well, there's people in the Bible who couldn't pray. They couldn't stay awake. They fell asleep. And it happened. Was it time for him to get captured? If his disciples never would have went to sleep while the enemy was pursuing him, would they have gained access? That's the question. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thank you. <laughs> so, we are on verse 6. Oh, no, 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 no. Verse 7. And the Levites shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And whosoever else cometh into the house, he shall be put to death. But be ye not the king when he cometh in. And when he goeth out. <laughs> Eight. So the Levites and all of Judah did according to the, all the things that Jehoiada the priest had commanded. And took every man, his men, alright, every man, his men. Hold on one second. That were, that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that were to go out of on the Sabbath. But Joadiah the priest dismissed them. Anyway, here was on to say nine. Moreover, Joadiah the priest delivered the captains of a hundred spears and bucklers and shields that he had not King David, which were in the house of God. It goes on to say verse 10, and we have to go to 21. And he set all the people, every man, having his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and the temple, by the king round the back. Verse 11. Then they brought out the king's son and put upon him the crown and gave him the testimony and made him king. And Joadiah the sons anointed him and said, God save the king. 12. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people into the house of the Lord. Now, this is the child that she was trying to kill. 13. And she looked, and behold, the king stood at his pillar at the entering in, and the princes and the trumpets by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets. Also, the singers with instruments of music and set this top to sing praise. Then Athaliah went, rent her clothes and said, treason, treason, like they, she tricked them. They tricked her. Like, oh, this, yeah, this is treason. How can y'all do this? He's not supposed to be king. I was supposed to kill him. How did he get away? Kind of thing, right? So it goes on to say, uh, verse 14, Then Joadah the priest brought out of the captains of hundreds that were sat over the host and said unto them, Have her forth of the ranges, and whoso followeth her. Fourteen. Then Joadah the priest brought out of the captains of hundreds that were set over the host and said unto them, have her forth of the ranges, and whoso followeth her, 
Let him be slain with the sword. For the priest said, Slay her not in the house of the Lord. Don't do it there. There's another place to do it. So then it goes on to say, 15, So they laid hands on her and went. And when she was come to the entering of the house gate by the king's house, they slew her there. 16, And Jehoiada made a covenant between him and between all the people and between the king that they should be the Lord's people. Alright, so we're in verse 17, have to go to 21, and we're getting through it, guys. 17, then all the people went to the house of Baal and break it down and break his altars and his images and pieces and slew Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. We read this, right? So then 18, also Jehoiada appointed the officers of the house of the Lord by the hand of the priests, the Levites, whom David distri distributed in the houses of the Lord. Every Levite is supposed to be in the house of the Lord. So it says, to offer the burnt offerings of the Lord as it is written in the law of Moses with rejoicing and singing as it was ordained by David. 19. And he set the porters at the gates of the house of the Lord that none which was unclean in anything should enter in. 20. And he took the captains of hundreds and the nobles and the governors of the people and all the people of the land and brought down the king from the house of the Lord and they came to the high gate and, and, set, the her king, and set the king upon the throne of the kingdom verse 20 verse 21 the last verse of this read guys verse 21 and all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was quiet after they had 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 slain Athaliah with the sword. The city started rejoicing after Athaliah's reign ended. So guys, you're watching Religion Week TV. We are on chapter 24. I'm your host, Spirituality, and my spiritual ears say we are back. Okay, so we're going to do chapter 24, verse 1. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was also Zebiah of Bathsheba. 2. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoadiah the priest. 3. And Jehoadiah took him for two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. 4. And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. 3. And Joadiah took him for two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. 4. And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. 5. And gathered together the priests of the Levites and said to them, Go out into the cities of Judah and gather all of Israel's money to repair the house of your God from year to year. And see that you hasten the matter, howbeit the Levites hasted it not. Now, does this mean the church has to get all your money to repair the house of the Lord? Not, not like that, people. Not like that at all. So it goes on to say, 6. And the king called for Jehoiada the chief, and said unto him, Why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection? And it goes on to say here, According to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the congregation of Israel for the tabernacle of witnesses. 7. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God. 
And also all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord did they bestow upon Baalim, Baal. 8. And in the king's commandment they made a chest and set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. 9. And they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring in the Lord. The collection that Moses, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. 10. And all of the princesses and all the people rejoiced and brought in and cast into the chest until they made, had made an end of it. 11. And we have to go to 27. Now it came to pass that at what time the chest was brought into the king's office by the hands of the Levites, right? And when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribes and the high priest's officers came and emptied the chest and took it and carried it to its high place again. Thus they did by day, day by day, and gathered money in abundance. I'm telling you, this part reminds me so much of the church. <laughs> Let go and say verse, uh, I believe we're on 12. Verse 12. And the king and Joel gave it, gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord. And also such was wrought iron as brass to mend the house of the Lord. Lord. And the king and Joel gave it to such as did the works of the service of the house of the Lord, and hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord, and also such as wrought iron and brass to mend the house of the Lord. 13. So the workmen wrought, and the work was perfected by them, and they set the house of God in its gate, and strengthened the people. Verse 14. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada. Wherefore, he made vessels of the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister, and to offer withal, and spoons and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiadiah. 15. But Jehoiada waxed old and was full of his days when he died. And 130 years old was he when he died. Man, I wish we can live part and part. I wish we can live past 50. I'll pray we live past 60. I mean, 20 at this day and age. Remember, they still trying to kill the Hebrew boys when they're two years old. Every man and child they can. They're afraid that light gonna spark again. But we just showed you, and I'm not talking about old evil ass Ethelia. I'm talking about this women in this Bible that reign besides her. Even she was wicked and did wicked things to the house of God. The Bible is showing you women reign, but you just don't have to be wicked and evil with it. So let's go on to 15. What Joe died, we read that. 16. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good towards Israel, both toward God and toward his house. 17. You have to go to 27. Now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them. Meaning obedience, they perform the, uh, the, the act of obeying the king. Then it goes on to say, 18. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers, and served groves and idols, and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. Remember, gra groves and idols, I believe people were eating and smoking herbs and doing all kinds of these groves were illegal in the eyes of God. We all know groves have vegetation of some sort in it, right? Well there were some groves here that was 
that God gave us to say. 19. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord, and they testified against them, but they would not give ear. 20. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord. I can spell that right. Thus saith the Lord. Right? So he goes on to say, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord that ye cannot prosper? That you cannot prosper. Why transgress ye the law? Is this a question for you? It possibly can be a question for me. Anybody you know still transgressing the law of God? But see, Christians is taught there's no transgression. There's no laws you can break of God. There's a lot of laws we can break in the Lord. So, it goes right here asking you, because you have forsaken the Lord, He hath also forsaken you. We never want to hear this. We want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. We do not want to hear the Lord has forsaken us because he says in one account, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now we hear here, you left him, so he left you. And I'm always saying no matter where you go, the Lord will never leave you because he never leave you nor forsake you. But it says right here that he will. Because. Because. You have transgressed his commandments. Figure out what his commandments are, people. You have forsaken him. So he has forsaken you. 22. Thus Joash the king remembered not the, ki the kindness which Joadiah his father had done to him but slew his son. And when he died he said the Lord look upon it and require it. There's some things the Lord wants dead in your life. Well, I'm necessarily saying human beings and people. But if you're sleeping with the enemy, possibly, right? I'm not sure. But there's things that you love a lot that God wants. You have to crucify the flesh in order for the spirit to rise. God wants some things dead in your life. But you keep trying to keep it alive. He's been trying to get you to kill that thing. Stop feeding that thing. Starve that thing. So it won't keep growing and, and desiring you to raise it like a giga pet or a chia pet where you got to keep feeding it and nurturing. No, 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 no. Kill that thing off in your life, especially if it's besetting you and causing you to go off course with, with the Most High God. So we are on verse 23, and it came to pass. At the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against him, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem, and destroyed all the princesses from among the people, and sent all the spoil of them unto king of Damascus, unto the king of Damascus. 24. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, and the Lord delivered a very great host into their hands. Because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers, so they executed judgment against Joash. 25. And when they were departed from him, for they left him in the great diseases, his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Joadiah the priest, 
and slew him on his bed, and he died. And they buried him in the city of David, but buried him not in the sepulchres of the king. He didn't get that respect, but he still got buried there. So then he goes on to say, 26, and these are they that conspire against him. And, and I, what I want to say is you have people in church, but they won't be buried with the king. You have people in this world, but they won't be buried with the king. They may reign and may be amongst them when they live in, but when they dead, the Lord is going to say, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I don't know you. So it goes on to say, 26, and these are they that conspired against him, Zabad, the son of Shemaiah, and Amoritus, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Shemri, a Moabitess. Okay. So there's different people rising up against these people all along. And we go right into verse 27, the last verse of this read. Now concerning his sons with the greatness of the burdens laid upon him and the repairing of the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the kings, and Amaziah, his sons, reigned in his stead. Go to the book of Kings and find him. Why did we just not read about all that in the book of Kings when we were there? I told you there's a lot of, uh, not, there's a lot of discrepancies and this book does not read chronologically. So with that being said, guys, We have to go ahead and continue to press forward in this word. We're going to be done. The morning read is over. As soon as the music... And so the morning read, guys. This is amazing. Back to doing it. This has to be a premiere. Maybe just an upload. I'm going to try to edit it, do the best I can, get it up to you guys before morning. I do have to get some sleep though, so if all goes well, you'll have this before morning, East Coast time. Um, yeah, we read Second Chronicles up to chapter 24 today. We read 21, 22, 23, and 24. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this morning read. Guys, get yourselves engaged, get yourselves involved. Let's have this conversation. I am a little tired. <laughs> hey. <laughs> thank you. Episode 86? My God, right? Who would have knew? That we would still be meeting on these YouTube streets from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. every morning, East Coast time, since March 2nd. Now on day 86, making it rain in these YouTube streets with the word of God, right? That's some amazing, amazing. You ain't know yet, girl, can say it. You ain't know yet. Hey, 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 it's a dance. Rejoice, right? I put the tambourine. guys <laughs> when this morning we end I'm also tired I told you guys I get silly my forehead is itching oh my god my nose is keep itching <laughs> anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you all it's been great you've been tuned into the morning read
Happy Memorial Day. My nose keeps itching. Happy Memorial Day. God bless you all. And I thank you so much for sharing this time with me. God bless you. Shalom. Peace. Making it rain in these YouTube streets with the word of God.